Okay, so Godzilla Planet of Monsters is the 2017 Japanese CGI anime kaiju film featuring Godzilla, produced by Toho Animation and animated by Polygon Pictures. It is the 23rd Godzilla film in the franchise, the 30th Godzilla film produced by Toho, and the first animated film in the franchise. Although I should say it's not the first time Godzilla's been animated. As much as I hate to say it, the TriStar animated series with Zilla still counts. And of course, who could forget the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla? That was pretty awesome. I really should get around to checking that out sometime. So, how was the film? Good, but not great. Let me explain why. So, uh, the premise of our animated special is that in the 20th century, mankind is under siege by all these giant monsters like Dogura, Kamakurus, Orga, and eventually one of those monsters is Godzilla. Uh, we'll get to him later. And since they can't put up with Godzilla anymore, they just have to leave the planet. They cannot survive if they stay. And then two alien species uh, come into the solar system and are just like, hey, we want to help out. And that really doesn't amount to anything. And uh, then they return. Even at the risk of running into Godzilla again. Luckily, this one Captain Huro Saki I think that's how his name is pronounced. I'm gonna botch a lot of names here. I'm just warning you right now. Uh, but anyway, he has a plan to kill Godzilla once and for all. And that's basically the premise of the film. Trust me, a lot more happens and I'm gonna get into it. All right, so um, let's start off with talking about Godzilla. This is easily the most powerful Godzilla we've ever encountered. Yeah, remember um, the version of Godzilla we got in Godzilla vs. Destroya? Yeah, this one uh, from the look of it is way more powerful and way taller. And this is definitely an entirely different beast altogether. You know, I don't know why they uh, decided to make this Godzilla originate from plant life instead of a prehistoric aquatic animal, but it's still Godzilla at the end of the day. Although I do want you to consider this, a monster that originated from plant life that resembles Godzilla. Last time I checked, that was the description of Biolante. I'm just saying, like, you know, so we got a monster that's closer to Biolante than we do actually uh, Godzilla in this film. I'm just saying, it doesn't even really look like a plant. Like, it looks more like a giant rock monster, if I'm being honest. And I don't know if that's like the translation in the animation or anything, but that's just my opinion on it. And this Godzilla moves really slow, you know, like, that's how I would expect him to move. But it also kind of makes you wonder, okay, can you speed it up just a little bit? But at the end of the day, you know, it's just another version of Godzilla. With that said, um, I'd like to say we're getting a lot of versions with Godzilla in the past couple of years. You know, in 2014, we got the reboot Legendary's Godzilla, which brought him back to basics. And then we had Shin Godzilla, or Godzilla Resurgence, if you like to call it that, where we basically get a new interpretation of Godzilla that kind of brings him back to the principle of the original film Gojira, but also updates the character. And now we have an anime Godzilla. That's a lot of versions in Godzilla within a short span of time. Still waiting on Godzilla King of the Monsters, which is the sequel to Legendary's Godzilla. Shin Godzilla isn't even gonna happen until like uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is out in theaters. It looks like uh, Godzilla Planet of the Monsters part two and three are uh, still coming uh, without any delays, so that's promising. Let's talk about the main character, Captain Huro Sakai. Uh, this guy really didn't do it for me. I mean, he wasn't the worst ever, but I think he suffers from the same problem that a lot of anime characters have when they're dubbed over for American audiences. He's super yelly, you know, he's just like, you bastard, you son of a bitch. I'll kill you! Ah! Yeah, get used to that, because he does that a lot. And, you know, like, when you're listening to him, he sounds like a fucking madman. You know, like, he's totally, like, compromising, like, uh, the lives of everybody on this ship just for his own personal vendetta. I'm just like, you're kind of a selfish douche. Just saying. Also, there's, like, two alien species in this series, but you can never tell they're aliens by looking at them. You know, they just look like people with, uh, 
you know, custom haircuts. I mean, seriously, like you got two alien species and you make them look really, really human. I mean, yeah, that does fall in line with like uh, Toho's traditional interpretation of humanoid aliens, like the older movies, but I want Godzilla and all monsters like him and aliens to be updated. You know, I don't want like retreads of what I've seen already. So yeah, that's my opinion on it. Um, the two alien species were a bit of a disappointment and I just felt like they were kind of unnecessary, really. Like they didn't really bring anything to the plot that, you know, requires their presence. And yeah, some of the other characters are just very generic. You know, they just didn't do it for me. You know, kind of suffer from the same issue as like the 2014 Godzilla, which the characters are kind of like blank slates for the most part, except for a few key players. So yeah, that's a bit of a negative for me. Also, um, the opening of this movie, extreme parallels to Godzilla Final Wars in the sense that there's a montage of monsters tearing shit up. You know, like they're trying to establish that this is the world where we're picking up the story after monsters have torn shit up. I mean, that's not bad or anything, but I'm just saying, clear inspiration right there. Also, like the selection of monsters uh, that are tearing shit up in the opening credit montage. Very random choices, honestly. Comacurus, Orga, Dogara. I mean, don't get me wrong, those guys are cool and all, and they're classics, but no Rodan or Angiris or maybe Mothra. Just saying. Okay, so let's get into my biggest gripe in the film. There's a lot of times where I'm just like, you couldn't have mentioned that earlier. Okay, so I'm about to put a big spoiler sign right down there because I'm about to get deep, deep, deep into explaining this film for you. Spoiler, they actually kill Godzilla at the end of the film, successfully. So he has this like invisible shield that you have to hit a certain organ to shut down. They do so and they blow him up. It works. And then like one of the chief scientists after the fact says, hey guys, um, so I've been doing some research and stuff and that might not be the original Godzilla from before. And you know what immediately happens? Just as you'd expect it, another bigger Godzilla comes up out of the ground and starts tearing shit up, and then roll credits. Like, you, you, you really couldn't have mentioned that before you, they put all their time and effort into killing this one Godzilla? You really, really, really wanted to wait after the fact? I swear to God, you better have figured that out right then and there. Otherwise, like, you were a careless dumbass. There, there were a couple other times that happened in the film, you know? And I guess, like, the biggest issue with uh, this uh, film is that it's part one of a three-part series, so it just you're just left with an incomplete feeling. I don't have a problem with the cliffhanger ending, but it just leaves you feeling, you know, incomplete. And here's the thing, like... You can do three-part series and still have satisfying endings that wrap everything up. For example, uh, Lord of the Rings. Like, you can watch every individual movie and, like, feel like you've got a whole individual package with that. You know, like, you're not forced to watch the other films. You should, but you have no obligation to. With this film, I feel like I have an obligation to watch the last two parts. So overall, this isn't really the worst thing in the world. I know a lot of people like aren't a huge fan of the choice in animation, but for me personally, I thought it was fine. Didn't really ruin my day. If I'm being completely honest, guys, I'm not like, you know, like a huge fanboy for uh, anime or anything like that, but I always can sit down, enjoy it, and really like dig into it. I know it's probably something I should really start getting into if I'm gonna be here on YouTube. <laughs> I understand that. Also, I think the animation kind of helped with the dubbing a little bit, honestly. Because you're not syncing it up with real human lips, you're able to get away with just a little bit more. So yeah, that was a interesting surprise. I don't plan on going back and turning on the subtitles anytime soon, but that's really a matter of preference. So yeah, while this wasn't perfect, um, I am looking forward to seeing what they do in the next film. I'm gonna give this one a six out of 10. It was good, and it is a genuine Godzilla film. It's just not the best. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.